Today we're going to disassemble the 2013 C-Max hybrid battery we replaced last summer. It's taken me a few months to get brave enough to attempt this. I am a professional Ford technician and this should not be attempted by do-it-yourselfers. My plan is to repurpose the cells for the kids' power wheels, so stick around to the last half of the video for that. So the first challenge I come across is these goofy shaped nuts. I thought they would be 12.8 uh, or 12.7 or something. So I go to the hardware store and find this universal set, but that didn't work out. What ended up working out was just a straight uh, deep socket, 6.8 millimeter. Now it's not the correct size socket for these nuts, so I had to be careful taking it off. They were pretty tight and I didn't want to damage the battery cells, so I was kind of going easy at first. I was also a little worried about the high voltage, but that turned out to not be an issue. So the nuts kept getting stuck in the socket and I had to try to get them out. Here's a closer look at how that socket and how that nut spline interfaced. It's sketchy, but it worked. Okay, so all that's left to do is pull out about 160 nuts off of all the cells. And I was going easy at first with that T-handle, um, but ultimately it kind of got worn out with that. It was taking quite a while. And I did switch over to uh, breaking them free with the T-handle and then running them out with the DeWalt. And I was just breaking them free and kind of letting the nuts sit there. And I was just wanted to be really careful about getting metal objects around the battery frame and making contact with the terminals. And the terminals even sit in little shrouds so that positive can't be shorted to negative while you're attempting to loosen or tighten them. Uh, so my solution was to use a magnet to pick out the nuts. So now this high voltage uh, junction that ties all the batteries together comes out as one big piece and it's a little bit awkward to try to get it off of the cells and again I'm trying to be safe and not short anything out and I'm minding where metal tabs are going so that it doesn't short out to the frame or anything and I didn't really plan ahead as to how many cables were still connected and uh, needed to be worked loose. that high voltage battery connector and I had to undo these small connectors and this high voltage connector from the battery relay center. Here's a look at all those cells and you can see they flip-flop positive negative positive negative and that's how they connect it into series. Is plugged in here and that was the one I was struggling with down there. And then this big connector right here. You can see I already have this one disconnected back when we were doing tests last summer. So it looks like to get this other side out, we're gonna be disconnecting here. These clips are kinda hard to actuate. And Okay, so now when we pull this out, that should all come out in one easy chunk. I'm a little bit concerned because of the damage here to what we're going to get into. Let's see how that... So there's just a pile of nuts coming out of this thing. And on to the second cell to remove that other high voltage junction. So this is where I had had just about enough and got out the Ryobi and started buzzing all the nuts off one at a time. I had to be a lot more careful because the nuts were kind of getting stuck in the socket and then falling in. and. Then I just pull them all out with a magnet. This is interesting. These black ones had an extra tab 
sticking up. How did this, this was sitting in here like this. Okay, so those black ones have an extra tab sticking up and I'm thinking that must be some sort of factory test location. So this is the one that had blown up with all of the electrolyte all over it. I was a little bit nervous taking that one out of the car just now, taking it out of the battery. We're getting another view of that battery that had blown up last summer. And just look at all the brown and all of the uh, electrolyte all over the place. It's just pretty ugly. And so one of the cell caps was sitting over here. And the other one is sitting over here. And so I've got this battery diffused. I call it diffused down to just a whole bunch of 3.7 volt cells. Actually, we should grab the voltmeter and check. I'm just curious about this dead cell over here that it would read. Yeah, it's reading. Zero. Ground zero. Ground zero. Ground zero. 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 So that was one of my concerns that this battery just sitting would drain all these cells, especially with that shorted electrolyte. And it looks like maybe these ones did. Oh, there's some volts. Yep, that one's good. So I wonder where, right there, that's only. Point five. Having a hard time holding the leads on there. Okay, so some of the batteries are completely discharged, some of them are okay. We'll see what we can do about charging them back up. moved on to a little bit of a different situation here. I only had the battery on this uh, 3D printer workshelf because that's where we had set it and it's kind of heavy to move around. But the problem is that I need to get these screws out from underneath it. So hopefully this will allow us to undo those screws and then each one of these two rows is a cell and I need to remove those cells and then it's gonna need to be disassembled. I need to get the two aluminum ends off so that the batteries can come out or the cells can come out. So I'm gonna need to get these two side rails out and then it can all start coming undone. Okay, so I'm seeing this foam adhesive here I'm just going to need to break that free. There we go. This side. Okay, that looks like that's all free. What happened there? A little bit bent up. That one's free. A little bit harder to get underneath this high voltage junction box. You know what? I bet we're good enough.
Okay, so now we've got our two cells, is what they're called. Each one has 38 batteries in it, and I want to get these ends off, and I want to get all these batteries out individually. So if each one's 3.7, Not sure if I want to stack up. I'm not sure if I want to run a 12 volt or the equivalent of a 12 volt or if I want to run an 18 volt because I've seen kits online to run power wheels at 18 volts. I think we're just going to have to try it. Uh, move everything over to my main toolbox bench okay this won't do give me a minute and let me clean this up all right that's a little better so 3.6 volts and I believe these are probably the partially discharged. I think lithium ion should be closer to 3.7. Okay, so my plan with this is to replace the 12 volt batteries in the power wheels. So if we go three cells, that comes out to 11.1 .1 volts, just shy, and the power wheels are just a direct connection right to the motor, so anything less and it's going to go slower. Uh, if anything, I'd like to pick up a little power, so I can go to a 4-cell. Uh, and that should be running more in the range of 14.8, uh, 15 volts, somewhere in there. I can go to a 5-cell and run this thing uh, a little up here in 18 volts, which is where I saw that adapter on Amazon that goes to uh, power tool battery. I think this is what I want to go for, is more like a 5-volt, 5-cell uh, uh, situation to get a lot more power. The kids are pretty much uh, done with these power wheels anyways. Um, they're older, they can drive properly. Uh, they've got some burned out motors and stuff, so I need to fix that. Um, so I think that's what I might do. So if we go four cell, this is what our power wheel batteries would look like. <clears throat> There's plenty of room in that battery compartment and let's go ahead and just pull out a power wheel battery okay so here's what the power wheel battery look like now that's a 12 volt lead acid battery and so we can see that yeah I don't know that it would fit in the compartment because these batteries go in this way so we might be looking at trying to fit everything in this way and boy that is the perfect size you know if we did something like that yeah but my concern would be is how long are these gonna last um, as far as charge wise so let's see if we do a five cell stack going for 18 volts that's going to fit in that power wheel compartment just about perfect because the door also acts as the vibration reducer. So that would really be a perfect fit. And I'll bet the capacity on five cells is plenty for the kids to play for a while. I might have to do a little more research. And so my next uh, plan with these, so we're going to think five cells here but it's going to fall over if it's not. So my next problem is I need to get this adapter. They sell them on Amazon. And actually, I could probably pry this battery apart since it doesn't work anymore. And I could probably steal it because from what I've seen inside of these batteries, you know, there's a little outline there, is just a, a normal 12-volt style battery. Let me grab one of those. Okay, so this is the kind of battery I'm talking about. That I've seen in there and we actually ordered a replacement from Amazon and that's all it was was just this 
with this adapted harness on it. So I think I'm going to order some of those and go from there. Another part to this lithium power uh, solution is, or modification, is that I need to, I think I can charge it with um, my RC car charger here. It's got all kinds of selections. So I'm gonna need to get some banana jacks and I'll probably just do some alligator clamps to charge it. So this is in series. If you connect power to ground, power to ground, power to ground, that's what's gonna stack up that voltage instead of being in parallel. And then if I can get a 5S uh, balance plug for it, I should be able to use this to charge it. My concern is that I believe this charger only goes up to 5,000 uh, milliamp hours, which is what uh, my slash batteries are. And even then it would time out sometimes. So yeah, well, I would say right now I need to get those harnesses ordered and then we'll start putting things together and seeing what works. So thanks for checking this out. Uh, this has been the disassembly of a Ford high voltage battery. And as we found out, it's just a bunch of 3.6 volt lithium ion cells inside of there. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. I'll get part two up here in a few weeks when I get parts from Amazon. In the meantime, why don't you check out these videos YouTube thinks you'll like.